Well, hi there. This is a phylogeny of big cats. Like all phylogenies, it's a testable hypothesis, explaining the possible evolutionary relationships between organisms. It is a model. And in the future, as we get more information and test this model and others, we may decide that other models are more useful than this one. We actually have a whole video about this. However, based upon what we know right now, this model seems to be a pretty good one. Now, most people don't know how to interpret these diagrams. Our last video explained exactly how to understand the information conveyed by a phylogeny. If you haven't seen that one yet, you can watch it by clicking here. We'll also have a link to it in the description, and you should probably watch that one and then come back here. Because once you understand the information that a phylogeny conveys, you need to understand why monophyly is king. When we discover something new, especially something dangerous, like COVID-19, for example, one of the first things we do is figure out where the new organism likely fits into the phylogeny of life. Why? Because when we know to which monophyletic groups it belongs, then we learn far more about it than we ever knew before. In the future, we will talk about how phylogenies are constructed. But today, I want to talk about what a monophyletic group is and why they are so powerful. And that takes us back to our phylogeny of big cats. Based upon this phylogeny, we can see that the closest relatives to lions are leopards. We can also see that the closest relatives to tigers are snow leopards. And we can see that leopards and snow leopards are both more closely related to lions, tigers, and jaguars than either of them are to clouded leopards. If I wanted to create a group called all the leopards, I could. I would just put leopards, snow leopards, and clouded leopards into a box. I could probably add leopard sharks, leopard geckos, and leopard slugs to the box as well. Why not? And this would be a fine way of organizing animals so that I could quickly find anything with leopard in its name. Of course, I had to know that about them before I could ever put them in the box. So it didn't teach me anything about these animals that I didn't know before I put them in the box. This group, all the leopards, that excludes many species that are actually more closely related to the leopards in the box than the leopards in the box are to one another, is not a monophyletic group. It is either a paraphyletic or a polyphyletic group. A paraphyletic group is an ancestor and some of its descendants, but not all of them. A good example of this would be reptiles if I don't include the birds. Birds are more closely related to crocodilians than crocodilians are to lizards. So if I make a group called reptiles, except for the birds, well, I have a paraphyletic group. If I put organisms from all over the tree of life, without any real regard for their evolutionary relationships at all, that is called a polyphyletic group. A monophyletic group, on the other hand, is an ancestor and all of its descendants. Lions are a monophyletic group. Lions and leopards, with their most recent shared ancestors and everything in between, are a monophyletic group. Jaguars, lions, and leopards with their most recent shared ancestors and everything in between are a monophyletic group. Snow leopards, tigers, jaguars, lions, and leopards with their most recent shared ancestors and everything in between are a monophyletic group. And the thing is that if I had never seen a snow leopard before, but I knew its location on the phylogenetic tree, I would know that most of the things that tigers, jaguars, lions, and leopards have in common which are probably inherited from their shared ancestors, also probably pertain to snow leopards. By understanding where they fit into the evolutionary tree of life, I suddenly know things about this animal that I didn't know before. Like since these big cats fall into a bigger monophyletic group called the placental mammals, I suddenly know that snow leopards probably have hair, maintain a constant body temperature, give live birth, and feed their offspring with milk. Because I know that mammals fall into a bigger monophyletic group called vertebrates, I would know that snow leopards likely have a vertebral column and a postanal tail. Because I know that vertebrates fall into a bigger monophyletic group called animals, I would know that snow leopards likely are multicellular eukaryotes that get their energy from eating other organisms and that produce collagen. And so it goes. 
Because of what I know about the other organisms in these monophyletic groups, I suddenly know an incredible amount about these organisms that I didn't know before. That is why this is such a valuable tool when it comes to novel diseases like COVID-19. Yeah, it was new. But as soon as we knew to which monophyletic groups it belonged, we instantly knew a ton about how it likely spreads, what it does, and how to stop it. And that is why monophyletic groups are king. And now you know. If you learned something today, please like this video. And if you'd like to learn more things like this in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And we hope to see you real soon.